are these people? We had from Popular Resistance through the People's Dispatch. Uh, it says hundreds arrested in Gaza solidarity encampments. This was the other day, May 2nd. Police were deployed to violently crack down on Gaza solidarity encampments erected by students at dozens of universities to demand that they divest from Israel. No, right? So, and Danny Haifong's in here. Shout out to Danny. I believe he's live right now. Hundreds of students, professors, community uh, members were beaten and arrested by officers on the night of April 30th. The crackdown and mass arrests at Columbia and City College, ordered by university admins, were carried out to clear and evict Gaza Solidarity encampments, which have been launched by students at dozens of campuses across the country in the last two weeks. I would say that's over 100 now. I saw a list somewhere. Okay. Um, yeah. Danny says, if this were China, Western media would be screaming about authoritarianism and clamoring for sanctions or military intervention, but this isn't Colombia. It's well, this isn't China, it's Columbia U. Look at the show of force they brought in. It was like 16, somebody said something about 16,000 cops. Ooh. That's insane. Yeah, Angel, shout out, calling it an invading force. And he, he may very well be correct, right? So, right, legal observers, and we got this is Eric Adams' night of terror. Nobody likes the New York City mayor, um, right or quote unquote left. The only people that seem to are the authoritarian left and the donor left, and of course the Israel lobby. Um, Legal observers have estimated that several hundred people were arrested in the coordinated crackdown in the city. They weren't even releasing how many people they were arresting. Hundreds of cops were deployed to the two universities in uptown Manhattan, where cities had, where students had maintained Gaza solidarity encampments. That looked like a lot more than hundreds right there marching alone. That couldn't have been all of them. Crackdown was launched less than a day after Columbia students had occupied a building on campus, Hamilton Hall, and renamed it Hind Hall after the Gazan child murdered by Israeli forces after calling for help. They literally have her on the phone calling and talking to the operators saying that they she, she was in, a, in an ambulance. They've already killed the driver and the other person in the ambulance. Can you please help me? And I believe they shot her. So, okay. yeah. Students had declared the building was in response to the occupation was in response to the administration's refusal to engage in good faith negotiations, citing their threats of deploying police and National Guard, and finally declaring that they would not divest from Israel. So there's no conversation, just no. Mm. We know why. Uh, there's been a lot of reports about how far back Colombia supports the imperial state. Following the occupation, the administration announced those participating would be expelled while dozens of students proceeded to, arbit to be arbitrarily suspended and the campus went into complete lockdown. Again, terror lockdowns, climate lockdowns, um, virus lockdowns, they're trying to find a way to lock people down. And I don't think they're looking to find it, but they're trying to get control back of, what's, of their university and get the students to get in line. They have a legitimate beef and gripe. They're like, look, we're spending $60,000 a year each here. So finally, on the night of April 30th, police invasion appeared imminent as hundreds of officers with zip ties gathered outside the university. Actually, shout out to Max Sarge, because he was in our comments that morning saying they were talking about going in at 10 p.m. that night. And sure enough, 9.57, Jesse and I were getting ready to go live. We're like, oh, they're going in. They're breaking it up. That was last. That was Tuesday night. Watch American Tradition episode forty. By mm -hmm. the way, that was a lot of fun from Tuesday, right? Um, it says around nine p.m. They 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 violently pushed through a line of protesters outside the gates around nine, arresting dozens. Then proceeded to storm the campus using a tank and ladder to access the second floor of the building, secured by student secured, secured and occupied by students. Yeah, they couldn't get into the uh, 
of course, the, you know, they had the, the doors barricaded. There was only one way in and out. People were, were upset and saying that they were violating the fire code. Eyewitnesses recount mm. that dozens of officers entered the hall, brutalized those inside, and arrested them. No surprise. They were dying to do that, we know. A complete lockdown was also declared across the campus, and students, faculty, and workers alike were barricaded in buildings by police officers under threat of arrest. Isn't that nice? It is nice. Right? At the same time... This is the nicest. Right. Hundreds of police officers surrounded City College, barricading students and workers at City College inside and threatening them with arrest. Arrest. After students and community defended the perimeter of the university for several hours, cops proceeded to storm the gates, armed with pepper spray and batons, and violently evict the encampment and arrest hundreds. Remember who's being violent here. It's not the students. It's the police who are escalating with violence. They're trying to, to evict these kids who have legitimate cri gripe. Um, they should allow people to pass through and to have access, but all those people are trying to do is mess up their encampment. So I understand why they would want to stop people from doing that. Now they have over 400 arrestees for the two universities were taken to one police plaza for processing while hundreds were, of people rallied outside. Students and people across New York City have vowed that the heavy repression doled out by the mayor's police force will not deter them from fighting for Palestine and are hitting the streets again on May 1st in a mass march for International Workers' Day. All right, there's Donziger, um, Columbia speech. Yeah, that was Rashid Khalidi gave, gave a speech. Right here you go, the Adams is, is going to the anti antiseptic line, outside agitators, right? They're attempting right. to disrupt our city. But we know a little bit more about that now, don't we? Uh, and we're going to talk about that in a yep. second because the gray zone, shout out to, to Max and, and to Wyatt Reed for figuring out another piece of the puzzle or whoever they got it from, but they published this last week or this week also. But on the other side of the country at UCLA, dozens of Zionist counter protesters launched unprecedented violent attacks against the students in the Gaza Solidarity encampment. They shot fireworks at students, beat them with pieces of wood, punched and kicked them, shouted obscenities, and inflicted hours of terror on the hundreds of students and community members that are participating in the Gaza Solidarity Encampment at UCLA. Despite the trigger-happy response against students, police barely intervened. Huh, how about that? And dozens of students were seriously injured. Go figure. No way. As we know, over the past two weeks, thousands of students have been pitching tents on campuses. Not necessarily, you know, look, they're Walmart tents. They're not being supplied by an organization. Right. Yeah. That's the dumbest thing that I've seen circling around. They're being paid for by George Soros. Well, Me Meanwhile, there's active GoFundMes for counter-protesting. Like up right now with forty thousand dollars. I saw it was like, fifty two thousand last I saw. Right, but right, it's like every every fucking you know accusation is a confession. Right, students have now inspired like, students from across the world who have now also organized encampments at universities in Australia, Canada, France, the UK, Lebanon, Tunisia, and more. Um, Kathy Vogan over at Consortium News went down to an Australian one. She interviewed. Like, no police. Administration's totally cool with us doing this. Like, they understand. They're permitting it. Everybody gets it. Yeah. Unlike what happened <laughs> over at uh, Columbia. Well, before we do that, let's let's take a pause for a second. Say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. What's up? Um, yeah. Um, cops are not not fun. We do we do not like the ones that go and beat up there's a, students. That, there's a saying about cops. Yeah, about how all of them or something. I can't remember how. What all of them? Forty percent of something? What? No. Oh, I'm I'm mixing them up. Something forty percent. Sorry, forty percent. Um. Oh, okay. So Anna Mayer says that 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 they're never going to be able to to drag her out. Um. 
Where are all the boomers who protested Vietnam? Um, they're sitting inside the encampments and they're fighting to protect the students is what's happening, Anna Mayers. Never going to lock my ass down, motherfuckers. Ooh. That's right. All right. Um, Dave Burt's over on, on the Rockfin also. I mean, we knew it was coming from the observation in the streets, the law of police. Yes, we did. Both sides getting set up by the Fed so cops can get more overtime. Industry standards in civil rights era. COINTEL, bro. Not just COINTEL, but also so that they can shape the narrative that these are violent protests when they haven't been. Right? Yeah. And that way, that excuses... The only violence I've seen is armed groups of fucking cops. Zionist like, right. kids. Right. You know, and infiltrators and whatever. Mm -hmm. The ones so, that show up with with you the, know. the skunk that that but you're already that seeing like narrative control over it, where it's like you know, there's been multiple tweets about like you know the cops should just shoot these kids and get it over with and whatever, and it's like you know I I thought this was America, I you know, where's those kids like Second Amendment. Right. Like, would you be okay with that? Would you be okay with them defending themselves? Do they have the right to defend themselves? Right. Like, uh, you know, that shit goes both ways, homie. So. No, it doesn't. That's the thing. It only you know, goes. It only goes one way. And right. That's, yeah. That's always how yeah, it. It's only works. allowed to escalate. Yep. One side of these. So. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, so let's go to this Gray Zone article that I brought. Uh, some of you may have seen this already. I, it's been covered in a couple of places, but Columbia Crackdown was led by a university professor who was doubling as a NYPD spook. Um, mm. But it only gets worse. Rebecca Weiner is a Columbia University professor who also serves as the intelligence director for, of the NYPD. Mayor Eric Adams credits her with spying on the anti-genocide student protesters and, <laughs> and directing the militarized raid yeah. that dislodged them from campus. That's where she also studied. Uh, if you what, two uh, Miss, Mrs. Mrs. Weiner, where did she study? Yes. Um, I'm a bet Yale, Columbia, one of those Ivy League. Well, also somewhere overseas, Yale. but... The violent crackdown carried oh, out on... Oh, has... Uh, Hotel Hasbara. Maybe. That, that place. Yes. The violent mm. crackdown carried out a Columbia student on Columbia students protesting Israel's genocidal assault on the Gaza Strip was led by a member of the school's own faculty, New York City Mayor Eric Adams has declared. That surprise. During a May 1st press conference, just hours after the New York, New York Police Department arrested nearly 300 people on university grounds, now according to... Um, um, People's Dispatch, it was over 400 between City College. Adams praised adjunct Columbia professor Rebecca Weiner, who moonlights as the head of the Weiner. NYPD Counterterrorism Bureau for giving police the green light to clear out anti-genocide students by force. Quote, she was the Ooh. one monitoring the situation, adding that the crackdown was carried out after she was able to, her team was able to, conduct an investigation. So it's not even just her... She's got a, a, a team of spooks inside Columbia. Oh, here's her getting Perfect. congratulated. Recently appointed, when she was recently appointed the Deputy Commissioner for Intel and Counterterrorism for NYPD. That was in July. Congratulations on being the world's biggest bitch. Well, I think that people inside Columbia would agree. Right, so on April 30th, dozens of people and dozens of cops in riot gear descended on Columbia's Hamilton Hall after students seized the building earlier in the day, citing a request from the admin. Several hours later, officers used a heavily armored NYPD Bearcat vehicle to enter the building through the window on the second floor and arrested those inside, while another team swept up members of the encampment outside. So that was two yep. weeks. Starting on April 17th, students of Columbia escalated their ongoing protest against Israel's genocidal assault on the besieged Gaza Strip. Also on the West Bank, but mostly on the Gaza Strip. They encamped on school grounds, stating their refusal to leave until the university fully divested from its Israeli-related re investments. 
That protest model has since spread to over 100 other universities in the U.S. and even been taken up abroad with similar actions like we saw at Leeds University in the Sorbonne in Paris, in Australia, and others. Just a few hundred meters from the Gaza protest encampment, Wiener maintained an office at Columbia School of International and Public Affairs. Her SIPA bio describes her as an adjunct associate professor, professor of international and public affairs who simultaneously serves as the civilian executive in charge of the NYPD's Intelligence and Counterterrorism Bureau. How does one get that job? Mm. In that role, according to um, Simba, nepotism, right? Wiener develops policy and strategic priorities for the Intelligence mm -hmm. and Counterterrorism Bureau and publicly represents the NYPD in matters involving counterterrorism and intelligence. So she's a PR person. And a strategy person. Sure. The, the NYPD's yeah. Counterterrorism Bureau currently maintains an office in Tel Aviv where it coordinates with Israel's security apparatus and maintains a department liaison. Wiener appears to serve as a bridge between the Bureau's offices in Israel and New York. That's how she got the gig. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's part of it. So... The NYPD liaison has sent hourly updates to NYPD headquarters in Lower Manhattan since the Hamas attacks in Israel, per NYPD deputy commissioner. Hourly updates. Okay. And why not, why not like every five minutes, you know? I mean, I feel like they're slacking. Right. They're being lazy. Um... A 2011 AP investigation revealed that a so-called demographics unit operated secretly within the NYPD's Counterterrorism and Intelligence Bureau. What a surprise. Yeah. This shadowy outfit. Otherwise. But she got me on the counter. Um, where's the other half? It wasn't me. Um, this, wasn't me. Thank you. This shadowy outlet spied on Muslims <laughs> around the New York City area. Yeah, I couldn't. couldn't it was like I'm sailing away. You know, I can't without finishing um even on students <laughs> right, they're, they're even spying on students at campuses outside the state who are involved in palestine solidarity activism they follow them apparently to rutgers university is one of the places it was developed in tandem with the cia which has refused to name the former middle east station chief it posted the senior in the senior ranks of the nypd's intelligence division yeah so now you've got <laughs> NYPD, Columbia University, Tel Aviv, and the CIA. Yep. No issue here. The demographics unit. No. <laughs> that's funny. Appears to have been inspired by Israeli intelligence as well. Not really funny. Uh, as a former police official told the AP, the unit attempted to map the city's human terrain through a program modeled in part of how on how Israeli authorities operate in the West Bank, which is interesting. Mapping the city's human terrain. I believe that's what the Lebanese threw Israeli spies out of their country for in December. We reported on that earlier this year. Dude, are, you, are you kidding me? That's what that's what Morgan Freeman didn't want to do in that Batman movie. You know? Like um, being able to fucking, yes. Uh, um, um, yeah. This is AI dystopian shit. We need to model the city's human terrain. What even is that? What is the what is human terrain? Yes, human terrain is where like, people will go. <laughs> Everywhere people can possibly inhabit. Um, but like it, or is it like? The terrain, I don't know. That, that phrasing is weird. That could be a lot of shit. Right. Human terrain is a pretty broad thing. Right. That could be how you, you know, go around the city, let alone not just like the topographic information. Well, you know. So I asked how somebody gets so, this job, and it's funny that you say what so you said. So I asked. I asked him. You asked him. A lawyer by training. So again, she's not a spy. She's a lawyer by training. She oversaw negotiations mm. between the NYPD and lawyers for local Muslims who had their civil liberties violated by its demographics unit. So she's been around for a while. 
Um, that was again in 2011. Right. And it was modeled in part. So she was already she was probably instrumental in coordinating that that type of training. So you asked again is how, how does she get I asked how she gets this job. You said nepotism. Wiener is the granddaughter of Stanislav yeah. Ulam, the Polish Jewish oh, mathematician course. who helped conceive the H bomb as part of the Manhattan Project. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's that's not. I mean, sure. She says I'm very true timeline screenshots. Everything. All right. Like, I'm very proud of that legacy, oh. she says, of course. So you're wait, 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 wait. Ahead. You're proud of one of the people that helped invent the hydrogen bomb. That's what you're proud of? The well, killing of innocents to the tune of fucking It is her grandfather. Millions or whoever. Yes, and <laughs> I'd be like, nah, fuck that. That dude was a bitch. Right. I don't care what fucking granddaddy, like, you know, like, so, <laughs> fucking Oppenheimer's so, a fucking family movie for her. <laughs> so what Max and, and Wyatt are saying here is that uh, during the NYPD's triumph, triumphant May 1st post-raid press conference, he blamed outside agitators for triggering the military-style police crackdown at Columbia. Mm. However... She refused to name the outsider supposedly on scene. No surprise. Because the outsiders belonged to her or somebody she probably coordinated with. Allegedly. Well, allegedly. What? Why Wyatt probably thinks that, you know, Oliver Anthony will fix the problem. Oh, come on, so. come on, man. Come on, man. According to Wiener, <laughs> the police response was not was not necessitated by any criminal behavior. But by the radical language and symbols of the students. Goodness, Karen, give radical. me a fucking break. This is not totally about radical. students suppressing ideas, expressing ideas, she claimed. The real problem was the alleged change in tactics by protesters, which she said represented a normalization and mainstreaming of rhetoric associated with terrorism. Yeah, that's a that's a phrase called from the river to the sea. Scares her. All right. Just use it. Let me tell you right oh. now. With, when it comes to Zionists, just using the word Palestine triggers them. They they wince. They can't even hear the word. All right, here's a Michael Tracy thing, putting a video about uh, blaming TikTok and saying that no no question, this is recasting political speech as terrorism. That's what she's been trying to do. We've been seeing this crackdown and rebranding of political speech, speech as violence. Shit. AOC tried pulling that shit on Jimmy Dore how many years ago? Violence. A long time ago. 2020, I believe. Words are violence. Words are violence. Proof of this dynamic could be seen in what she claimed was the common trend of wearing headbands associated with foreign terrorist organizations, let alone the fact that your people were going to dox them and try to get them thrown off a school, thrown out of school. Yeah. The reissuing of Osama bin Laden's 2002 letter to America, which had a lot of interesting points like it or not <laughs> you know you, you can wait so wait it they just have to bury it forever like you can't give any yeah. credit to anything that was in there whatsoever okay of course that's tiktok and of course a brief visit to columbia by nala al arian who we are incorrectly described as the wife of someone who had been convicted for material support to terrorism no she wasn't Absolute oh. lied spear job. Just that's thinking. that's not somebody who I would want necessarily influencing my child if I were a parent of somebody at Columbia. But you're not. You're not. It wasn't your call to make. You just were judge, jury, and executioner for hundreds of students that had already made decisions and been camping out for two fucking weeks. Huge, huge stones. Like, wow. Right? Nala's husband, Palestinian academic Sami al Aryan, had been in, in, indicted on flimsy terrorism charges in 2003, but a jury refused to convict him. Nevertheless, her brief stop at the Columbia encampment, where she says she did not even interact with any demonstrators, was cited by Adams during three separate media engagements to justify the police repression. Why? Because they needed their narrative. They got it. Didn't matter if it was true. 
And this woman, Rebecca Weiner, was one of the main perpetrators of that narrative. Here, CNN's Laura Coach just smeared Sami al Arian, whose wife apparently visited the encampment a few days ago, as a convicted terrorist. This is a malicious lie. He was never convicted. This is what Israel does. They lie. Then they say, oh, well, ah, come on, that's that's a technicality. Of, ah, come on. Days after the story's already been out there. But when it mattered, the lie is what made it to most of the people, and they know that. And a lot fewer people ever end up hearing the truth. It's garbage. Mm. I'm not going to play the video. Check this out. <laughs> it's in the gray zone. All these links yeah. are going to be in the description afterwards, uh, or at least in the sub stack. This is going to be so long, I won't even be able to fit all these links in, in YouTube description. Throughout the press conference, Mayor Adams repeatedly cast the city's crackdown on student speech as the only possible solution to ongoing campus encampments, citing undefined threats to the minds of impressionable youth. God forbid they I mean, actually... He thought about mustard gas, but he figured he couldn't do that. Well, I mean, the Israelis only, have been using white way phosphorus. Be they've been using right. white phosphorus, and they've been using tear gas and and uh, pepper spray. So why not? This is there is a movement yeah. to radicalize young people, and I'm not going to wait until it's done and all of a sudden acknowledge the existence of it. Guess what, pal? You're the part of the. You're the reason why they're radicalized. They're radicalizing against you, yeah. you fucking clown. Yeah. Young people are being influenced by those who are professionals at radicalizing our children. Yeah, by beating them up on the streets and arresting 97% uh -huh. of the black ones. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. People of color, you know, as far as drug stuff, getting arrested a large percentage higher than anyone else. Not that I'm hoping that we do. They should drop all the drug crimes. I'm not going to allow that to happen as mayor of New York City. I don't think he's going to be mayor for much longer. Um, yeah. He's definitely in his last term now. After angrily pro proclaiming that his uncle died defending this country, mm -hmm. it's despicable. I don't that, stand for that. It's despicable that schools will allow another country's despicable. flag to fly in our country. But wait a minute. It's despicable. Um, something wrong with this picture? I thought um, he said he wasn't going to allow people to fly another flag in our country. Mm. Here's your sign. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh. that's, that, that's Rebecca. Hmm. That's what we're up against, guys, is, is Zionists like that.